My raising experience is telling me at this point that I am in a whole heap of trouble. Eleven of the hardest climbs you can find in the Swiss Alps, all taken on over one day of brutally epic riding in the infamous Tour de Stations Ultra Grand Fondo. And I'll be on the start line, all 90 kilos plus of me, on a budget bike equipped with Shimano Sora. I'm out to prove that you don't necessarily need to break the bank to find a bike that will still perform and take on these incredible two-wheel challenges. Will I make it to the finish? Guess there's only one way to find out. This, folks, is budget bike versus Epic Sportive. Ollie took this event on last year and did an incredible effort, finishing in 25th position in 11 hours and 57 minutes. Returning to GCM Megabase, a happy but broken man. He didn't stop talking about how hard it was. And in a full sense of bravado from me, I uttered five words I could never take back. Can't be that hard. Oops. Bit of a silly statement to make, and Tour de Stations got wind of this and invited me over here to see if I could beat Ollie's time see if I can go any faster. Which is something I'm very daunted by because I'll be more than thrilled if I even make it to the finish, let alone go any faster than Ollie. I'm scared, very, very scared. Never done this altitude in one hit, but still I can't wait to get cracking. What a place to ride a bike. It's gonna be some experience and some challenge, and I've got some bike to ride it on too. Magnus Baxter's old team bike. Frame set picked up in an auction for £300. Decked out with Shimano Sora R300. Group set and wheels, which comes in at £615 sterling. This is a bike that is built for performance, but at a much more affordable price point compared to current top spec models. You're looking at around £1,000 for the bike you see in front of you, and yet it still competes in a way you'd expect from a race-orientated machine. It's even got Magnus's 15 centimeter stem right there and his autograph on the top tube. A former winner of Paris-Roubaix, no less. Once again, this bike is gonna carry a massive unit of a cyclist. One slightly less successful than the other, but we'll, we'll brush over that fact. I'm going to dive into the story about this bike a little later on in the video, but right now it's time to get ready for the 4 a.m. start tomorrow morning. 242 kilometers, 8,848 meters of climbing awaits us. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and ups and downs, and ups and downs, and you, yeah, you get the picture. Tour de Station starts in Le Chable, found just below the famous Verbier. From here, we essentially do one big lap of the Valais Canton. It's one climb after the other. The route is literally more jagged than the Matterhorn itself. 11 climbs, 242 kilometers and 8,848 meters of climbing. The final ascent will be the Col de la Croix de Coeur, which tops out at 2,175 meters, before a final descent back down into Verbier to reward tired legs. If I make it that far, that is. Got my number, got my apple, got my beer. I'm just going to do 242 kilometers. Well, made it to the start line, absolutely pitch black. So many people here ready to get going. I'm pretty excited. This is going to be pretty epic. Let's do it. I've decided to rip my tactics up, see if I can hang with the front group. Maybe 30, 40 guys here. I'm pushing on. 
starting to get a head start on Ollie, but I'm feeling it. Burn already, and I know this is a bad idea, but oh well, so much fun. First climb done, first descent done. Bit of gravel thrown in. 35 kilometers down. Feeling good actually, bike's feeling perfect. Starting to see the mountains appear, sunrise is coming, spirits are high. <laughs> I'm just trying to soak in sunrise, really. Absolutely just stunning. What a place. Feeling good, I'm kind of on track in terms of my average speed and the time where I am on the route with Ollie. So that is a good thing, but I am starting to suffer already, which is not a good thing. I feel little twinges of cramp and uh, yeah, definite um, going into the pain already, which is quite early for that sort of stuff. But just need to keep pushing on, keep fueling. Going for a spell where people are kind of overtaking me. I think I've overtaken one person that they'd uh, punctured. Might have overtaken someone else. I'm not sure if they're in the race. I think they're just out for a Saturday morning spin. But I'm just trying to keep the head strong, keep pushing. It's a long day. Things will turn back into my favor. I'm about a third of the way through, doing okay, but beginning to suffer. So I think now, probably a good time to tell you a little bit more about the bike I'm riding on before I really do enter the pain cave and can't string a word together. So it's a budget bike, which I found on eBay. I was looking for around a thousand pounds total for the build. And I searched long and hard in the end, I found a frame set it used to be Magnus Bagsteads, X-Pro, from 2008, this frame. Magnus winner of Paris Bay, of course. Very tall, so straight away I knew it would fit me. Carbon frame set, but it is 14 years old. I've got it checked over by a mechanic. All good to go. Shimano, chipped in and decked it out with their Sora R300 group set. Now this is their fifth tier group set. So you have Durace, Ortegra, 105, Tiagra, then you have Sora. You also have Claris below that. And it's still got that race orientated feel. It's got the integrated cable shifters, dual pivot brakes, forearm crank. It looks and feels like a top of the range group set. Now, talk about price, Durace, you're looking at around four grand, which is great if you can afford it. Sora, around 400 pounds. So you can see the difference in the price. So far, it's carrying me well. Total weight for the complete bike, 8.4 kilos before I strapped my bags and all my food onto it, which is pretty good. I mean, this frame set would have been top spec back in the day. It would have been the best bike you could get in the world tour. And pair that now with a brand new Sora group set. And I think 8.4 kilos still competes well with your top spec bike for the price. 
Now I know for many of you, a thousand pounds is a solid investment, but consider this. This group set can go on any bike and work wonders. It can be a commuter, be a bike for the weekend, and it can also compete in a really tough event like this. And the components, they're robust, so they're gonna last, and even if they do you know, wear out over time, they're gonna be cheap to replace too. So, the longevity of this bike, second to none. Hundred kilometers in, not even halfway, and then um, suffering. I've had to afford myself a first proper stop and just give myself five minutes, five ten minutes, and sit and eat. I'm just trying to do a bit of a reset because I've been hitting a bit of a wall last uh, last hour. My racing experience is telling me at this point that I am in a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> it's definitely. Definitely not what should happen. We, things are about to get pretty ugly from now on. The most altitude I've ever done, about 6,000 meters, I think that was in the Giro, from the Vuelta. On those sort of days, you just have to ride steady and just not crack, and you'll be okay. So basically I've cracked. I'm not riding steady anymore, I'm lying on a pavement, eating sweet bread and bananas, and um, I think this is baby food. So it's not a good sign. Keep on turning. Right, I'm gonna get going. I say I'm gonna what my plan will be. Crack on for a bit more. And I'll probably have one more big stop. Hopefully in like 70k or something. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Cheers, mate. Enjoy. Thanks. Hundred kilometers to go. That is a uh, good feeling, actually. Past halfway, just descended Transmontana, really long descent, basically the other side of the valley. Whiz down, must have been over 20k long. Absolutely stunning views, just really incredible. Coming down onto the wine kind of groves, and now the turn around. We're heading back down the valley, but on the other side this time. So the climbs come thick and fast. There really is no flat. The challenge does not let up. Good news is though, I actually feel a little bit better than I did when I kind of stopped that feed zone and really just died. So um, that's good for morale. I'm kind of hoping to dig in now, get another bit of chunk done. Have one more good stop and eat up. Ninety k to go. I've just done the worst climb in the whole route. It was absolutely horrific. Shorter, but just so steep. I was just groveling up it, really. And um, yeah, just keeping the pedals going. Started to suffer, but uh, again, uh, where I'm looking at it now, got about three climbs to go. Three big ones, so I'm splitting it up into that. If I can get over the next two, then um, yeah, it's, one, it's the last climb. So if I can get to that last climb, You'll make it. I um, have some words of advice from your fellow colleagues from back uh, just oh, yeah. the base. What are they saying? Well done, Connor, mate. Keep it going. Remember, this is the kind of ride where legends are made. This is not an easy one. 
but you will do it, mate. And also remember, it's not just about you either. You're doing this for everyone that rides bikes on a budget. So you got this, mate. You've totally got it. Yeah. Thanks, Si. Just realised that I'm having my snacks in the middle of a kind of recycling centre. The budget bike is going strong though. Can't fault it. Hasn't missed a beat. It's been feeling great. Just the ride needs a bit of work. I'm not giving up though. Not giving up. Come this far. I do want to show you you can do it on the bike like this. And it is, size right it is. This is a bit of an epic one. It's a lot of climbing involved. Maybe underestimated it slightly. Mount Everest is quite high. Yeah, it's not banner down. It's not the local climb, but I mean, look where I am. Apart from being in a recycling center, I'm in probably the most beautiful place in the Swiss Alps. So far I've been managing to fuel pretty well I think. The strategy's kind of been to get these SIS better fuel gels in me. 40 grams of carbs, and they're just easy to get in when I'm suffering on the climbs. And then at the top of the climbs, that's when I'm having a bit of real food, you know, some bars, bananas, that sort of stuff. So you can kind of digest on the descent and keep it on getting these in. And I start climbing again, so far so good. It's been doing the trick. So, I'm on kind of a plateau now. Stay up here for a bit. Let me descend. Let me start the penultimate climb. About 65k to go. But it's getting hot now. Really hot. I think I'm in a bit of a Bit of a battle with a time cut as well, the more I think about it. Got until eight o'clock, so just over five hours to get to the finish. Which is doable, but I crack any more than I am now, I'm be in big trouble. This climb is gonna be savage. Carrying on fighting, but yeah, really broken. Uh. Absolutely broken. Hardest climb of the day, real steep ramp at the bottom. I was just suffering so badly that I couldn't even turn the pedals anymore. So I just got off my bike and I just lay down for 10 minutes and closed my eyes. I've eaten all my food and drunk all my water, but it did do me a world of good. Right now I'm just trying to make it to the top of this climbing thong, which I'm guessing is around 3K still to go. Made it to the top of Thon, 2,085 meters altitude, kind of the penultimate big climb. From here, I descend down, and it's final climb, long one, long, long one. Ollie finished an hour and a half ago in his attempt. Um, so uh, that ship has sailed. I am absolutely broken. Thankfully, they got pasta up here, so I'm just shoveling it down. 
there's a cutoff in two and a half hours at the finish. So essentially you need to descend, get up the last climb in two and a half hours. It's gonna to be touch and go. But I've come this far and I'm determined just to get there now, no matter what, so I'm gonna push on. Hopefully the pasta does something for me. And then um, I guess just pray for a miracle. I'm actually feeling a bit better off the pasta. Feel a bit more full. Hopefully it will give me a second wind. So my cravings have gone away, which is a good thing. I did catch a glimpse of the, uh, the broom wagon. So I found out I've got an extra half an hour. It's 8.30 to cut off. There's no way in hell I'm getting in that broom wagon. Sad wagon, most depressing place on earth. Never. The budget bike fights on. Come on, Sora. Come on, Big Maggie's bike. Ah. 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 I see some water. What does it look like? How am I feeling? It's quite hard to describe, really. I think I've missed the time cut, unfortunately. I just want to finish now. Wait, you, you are going to finish. <laughs> Mm, it's okay. so close. I'm not giving up now. I walk up the thing in my bare feet. At this stage, it was pretty evident that I'd missed the time cut, but I'd come so far already in this incredible event. Stopping now wasn't an option. The only thought in my mind was making it to the top of the final climb before sunset. And by continuing on this mission, I was rewarded with quite possibly the most stunning view of the ride so far. Oh, the top. Ah, oh, that is a good sight. Let's see. Let's see. Ah. Oh. I'm done. I'm done. Did it. I did it. Got to the finish. Managed to cross the line at 9.09. So um, 17 hours, nine minutes in the end. Missed the time cut by 39 minutes. So, uh, yeah, didn't beat Ollie. <laughs> But I'm so happy to make it to the finish because there was a moment, a few moments, I, th I thought I wasn't going to do it. Um, but I just, I just wanted to do it so bad. Never ridden to the height of Mount Everest like that before. I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to do it for the budget bike for Sora to show that you can do this sort of challenge on something that's more affordable. Big thanks to Tour de Session for inviting us over here and challenging me to take on Ollie because it was some experience, what a place. I mean, I suffered like anything, but it was just magical. And even though I missed the time cut, here I am on the top of the Quad de Coeur, 2,174 meters altitude. Got to see the sunset of the Swiss Alps. What a day, what, what a day. Anyway, it's time for me to descend home. And I think I'm just going to lie in my bed and eat pizza. But before I go, let us know in the comments section below which GCM presenter you think should take on Tour de Sachons next because Ollie still sets the benchmark and it was a cracking time, some effort. 
I honestly don't think anyone's going to beat that. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.